One of the four key research pillars of Bolton Clark is combating loneliness and social isolation. In recognition of their importance to the health and well-being of the community members we support. Social connection has been recognised as a way to protect people from the risk of loneliness and the Bolton Clark Research Institute has been working with key other stakeholders, including older community members, to develop strategies to support them to, better, to, better, to be better connected and improve their holistic wellbeing. We are proud to host this symposium, which not only showcases the work of Bolton Clark through the Research Institute, but also the national and international experts. This is how we can truly improve the lives of older community members by working together on advancing what works and sharing that with others. Today's symposium is our way of helping to share knowledge about social connection, what is being done in practice and what is needed to embed effective social connection initiatives within business as usual. I thank all presenters who have given up their time to share their expertise with us this afternoon. I would now like to introduce Professor John Polares, who will provide the opening address. Professor Polares is the Chancellor of Swinburne University, Executive Chairman of Leaf Independent Living Solutions, an innovative functional health and assistive technology business with 14 independent living centres nationally. And he's also the Chair of the Ending Loneliness Together Advisory Group. John is a friend of Bolton Clark and is a passionate advocate for training and education. The care of senior Australians is also important to him and, um, and this includes people with disability um, being connected with work and training. As former chair of the Australian Industry and Skills Committee, he led the reform of the vocational education system. Amongst many achievements, John chaired the federal government's aged care workforce strategy task force, which culminated in a pivotal report, A Matter of Care, Australia's aged care workforce strategy. John, we look forward to, to hearing your views and welcome. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Pat. And I really much appreciate the opportunity of spending time with you all today on this very important topic. And I congratulate Bolton Clark on taking a lead when it comes to issues of loneliness in the community. I want to add my acknowledgement of the traditional owners of the lands, and I also want to pause and reflect upon the very many elderly Australians who also contribute to the long body of uh, tradition, of family and of community, many of whom will be entering into aged care uh, today, not even realising that they may have been in that situation as recently as the last few days. So these people need our time, they need our thought. As Pat says, this has been an incredibly disruptive few years. But for the aged community, it's been a disruptive decade or, or two. 21 reports into aged care, the matter of care report that made very clear um, recommendations to government, a royal commission, and we still stand here today with no real decisions and no real action. We've had a pandemic. We're now going through a period of extraordinary geopolitical uncertainty. And many said that this decade was going to be the decade of decision making. A time when we would have to finally, as a community, balance the need for economic growth and technological advancement with social inclusion, with social equity and with sustainability. Major challenges facing us in these decades. And yet we come to something and a concept that people believe they understand, which is loneliness. A deadly condition, a condition that's causing the lives of so many to be less than it's possible to be. And that's why I'm delighted again to be speaking today and to be participating uh, in this much needed sim symposium. One in four Australians report being lonely. Through the pandemic, one in two reported as being lonely. Loneliness peaks in the youth and it peaks in the elderly. So you can very well imagine the percentage of loneliness that the elderly will have been experiencing these last few years. 
notwithstanding, as I say, the kind of issues that are being thrown at us through the media, creating even higher levels of stress. So loneliness is a critical issue of our time. Research on loneliness adds detrimental implications for our health and well-being in communities and in the workplace and in schools is advancing rapidly. But we do know now that loneliness is a subjective sense of social isolation. It's simply feeling lonely and it's as equally important as being physically isolated. I can tell you from our own research in Leaf Independent uh, Living Solutions that the difference between an optimal ageing curve moving through different stages over time uh, of disability and functional loss is largely driven, particularly in healthy women, by this sense of perceived loneliness. And in men, it's driven largely of a sense of lack of social and, um, and, and general life purpose. How do you quantify these? How do we understand these? But we know many people suffer in silence. I can't tell you how many times I've visited people's homes, visited um, care facilities, or even seen the elderly sitting quietly in the park, hands hands resting in, in their heads, their head, sorry, resting in their hands, feeling that sense of despair. We know that there are a vast number of the elderly who aren't visited in, um, in, in care. We know that people living with, with, with different stages of dementia have less visitors. Why? Because the visitors get less of a return on the investment in time, not appreciating the value that it is bringing to the individual that they're, they're visiting. We're living in a society where the burden of care has become too hard and where we do need to find ways to provide the support. So while addressing loneliness serves as a potent preventative strategy that combats a lot of poor outcomes, it's important that people at the front line are aware of the factors around loneliness and the kinds of issues that they genu genuinely drive. Many organisations, and again, I'm so grateful to Bolton Clark, are beginning to direct their time and energy to address loneliness in their communities. However, because the work is largely done in, in silos, we miss opportunities to collaborate, to share knowledge and to pool resources. The scientific evidence on what is effective for people who are lonely is not well translated to service providers on the ground or into policies that influence the way that we live and the work and play. We're also underinvested in understanding the scientific research base. We're heavily reliant on evidence from other parts of the world. And it's only by building a, a body of knowledge and understanding across Australia that we will be able to address the particular issues that, um, that, that are relevant in the Australian context. Now, the link between loneliness, mental health, has to also be made to physical health. Sadly, it's, it, it shows up in much of the research that the impact on mortality is substantially increased as a result of loneliness. Loneliness is associated with 26% greater risk of premature mortality. And living alone or being socially disconnect, disconnected is associated with a similar risk of early death. We also know that loneliness is associated with numerous chronic health conditions. For instance, those who are reporting loneliness have been found to have higher incidence of breast and, co and collateral cancers. Having poor social relationships is associated with a 29% increase in the incidence of coronary heart disease and 32% increase in the risk of stroke. So this is not a, not a light issue. It's not an issue to be ignored. So what do we need to do about it? One, we need to invest in the scientific research. We need to back the likes of the effort of Bolton Clark and other research institutes and the Ending Loneliness Together initiative to build that research space. We need to coordinate a consistent approach across all sectors. And this goes to a common definition, measurement and framework to apply around loneliness. It's about increasing community awareness, ensuring that the community is empowered to help each other. It's about promoting the community and societal level interventions, 
ensuring that communities from schools, neighbourhoods to workplace policies support the promotion of social connection for better health and wellbeing. I couldn't think of a more important topic for our time, one that won't be solved entirely by government, although their funding will be helpful. It is a community challenge. It's one that we need to raise awareness around. And again, I congratulate you all for taking the time this afternoon to spend on this uh, important issue. I once again thank Bolton Clark, Pat, the support of your board around this effort. And I very much look forward to hearing the discussion today and um, and see what kind of outcomes can be produced. So thanks so much.